video. As I said in my last one, um, our team has expanded. It's not just Jessica and I anymore. Uh, in the last episode, we talked to Peter Case. Now I want to introduce Grace Isaac. <laughs> I don't, Grace. Good. That's Todd. Hey. Ties the ball knot. <laughs> Maybe we should have somebody take the tie away. some attention here. Yep. So, this is a big project that, uh, that uh, Jessica and I started, decided to undertake. Um, what, uh, what are the circumstances, what drew you to wanting to, to become a part of the whole project? Well, I've always been an outdoor girl. I mean, as a child, I, you'd always find me up in the trees or wandering around in the field. And I've been an athlete all my life, long distance skiing, long distance bike rides, triathlons, biathlons, um, marathon, ultra marathon. And so being outdoors is just part of it. And I think permaculture really kind of puts you outside. You know, if you're going to be doing your own building and, and doing your own gardening, I think that'd be fun. Um, that was one of the things. I think the biggest thing that really changed my mind about what, what I was doing in life was when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So after a rough year of four surgeries, and, um, just being really run down and tired and uh, the cancer medication didn't work and I was exhausted. And I, I decided I can't do what I'm doing anymore. So I retired early, sold my house in 45 minutes, and um, trying to decide what I was going to do. And then your wife, your wife asked me if I wanted to participate in the permaculture community. And I thought, yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. It sounds fun. It'll be educational. And um, I can't think of better people that I like to be with. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, because <clears throat> here you are, you're about to retire. I mean, you probably could have gone, probably a million things you could have done. So it's interesting that you chose to be, uh, chose to do this. I mean, it's kind of a big undertaking, kind of a big challenge. I think so too. I, I like the whole idea of being able to build a house and it would be hopefully just what I want it to be and have what I want it to be. Um, I, I would already picture a large studio space for painting and drawing and sculpture and um, I brought my potter's wheel with me and um, a big desk, desk area for working on the novels and I brought my border collies with me and I'm still involved in border collie rescue and so, so that's something you're still involved in I'm still I'm still on the board for border collie rescue and uh, of course uh, Jackson and Ty you brought them with you uh, those are rescues they're both rescues they're what what I call foster failures but they come into your house and you're gonna foster them and then they fail to leave your house. <laughs> so but I've had um, eight border collies and I've helped to rescue my home sixty seven. Sixty seven of them. So That's pretty impressive. What um being with their uh Jackson Tire with you, um Gonna be living with him. How do you see? Do you see them having a role? Um, as you can tell that. already, Ty is still right here, still throwing the ball at me. Um, I, I think that they're important, 
Um, it's a connection still to the wildlife that's around. And um, animal lovers are special people. And I think that they're also the same kind of people that get involved in permaculture, that have an understanding that you're not the only living creature on the planet, and you have to fit yourself in with everything. So this is a little link that when people meet these dogs, then they want to know all about the per permaculture community. And so they're just a natural for getting the ball rolling. It's hard not to love this too. <laughs> I can run you pretty quick. Yeah, it, everybody likes this guy here. And that's Jax. <laughs> Jax's owners moved to Saudi Arabia and they couldn't take him with them. So he came to me and then he failed to leave. Ty's owner had back surgery and decided that he's too much energy. So he's he's here. I thought he calmed down when he hit four, but he's eight now, and he's still still a bundle still of energy. A bundle energy. <laughs> now you're a very talented artist. <laughs> well, so are you. <laughs> well, we're talking about you right now. <laughs> um, obviously, you feel. Uh, you're definitely eager to use that in uh, building your house. I've seen uh, you definitely using that creative energies toward that. Uh, how else do you feel those? Uh, you can use those creative energies in this in this project. How am I going to use them? Well, one of them was um, when I was looking at the harvester ants and how special they are, and. Um, this week I was walking out in the field. You can tell where the harvester ants are. They leave just a big barren spot and there's this little gravel. And then the gravel that I saw was, um, looked like little limes, limestone chunks, but then there was a lot of brilliant blue and brilliant green little green pieces. So I picked those all up and I think those were copper and azurite. And as I was picking up all those little green pieces, I realized there's a lot of green rocks around here. And since this is the Green Dream Project, I thought it would be really fun to do a whole pathway or driveway of just green rocks. So one, you know, that just come from, from looking at harvester ants. So there's that tie into nature. And, um, I think different ideas like that, um, different building materials that are not what you'd expect to use, that you can, you just have to be, you just have to have an open mind and see something other than its typical usage. So all, all those kind of things always come to me. Um, one was the yucca plants who put up a, they put up a long, tall, stock that can be about this big around and they are anywhere from three feet tall to 10 15 feet tall but I thought that plant dies after that stalk goes up and all the seeds come out and wouldn't that make a nice fence to cut those down or um, a chair or um, the wall in the bathroom with all of these in there. Just sand them down and stain them. I think it'd be lovely. Although I did take the top uh, seed portion of, of that plant this week and I painted it and used Hershey Kisses wrappers and made it a Christmas tree, my Southwest Christmas tree. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe I should write down some of the ideas because I know I've thrown a lot of them out there. You definitely got to keep track of them. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to do that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, um, so how do you feel like art and permaculture? How do those fit together? Art and, uh, they just go together. They really do. Um, I think that uh, people who work with permaculture, they have to think outside of the box anyway. Um, and the more you can do that, the more unique your place is. And the better it works and um, the better it fits into the environment and the better it fits you into the environment. So I think that 
art and permaculture, it's, they just go hand in hand. You have to know your art, but it sure helps if you know something about the environment around you. And, and since I do a lot of animal portraits and there's a lot of interesting animals around <laughs> here, I mean, that, that it just works so well. Um, I, I see I've already influenced myself with uh, what you call the Coca-Cola art. <laughs> so those are just cutting open Coca-Cola cans and then doing uh, embossing them. And I've got one with a lizard on it that's embossed in the metal. One that's just a design and I forgot the third one. Oh, hummingbird. And I nailed them onto my refrigerator door on the panel panels. So I got three more to go. So and I didn't think I'd ever do anything like that, but moving into a different environment away from the snow and real trees makes you take a look at everything and you have to find it. Find what's different and the beauty and all of it. Yeah. It's good to see that you've uh been influenced already by what's been going on around you. Obviously I've been making a lot of you know really great observations out there. Yeah, the whitewater draw is real close by and that was a interesting <coughs> discovery to find out that here's this globally important <coughs> place come here that um all the sandhill cranes come to and winter over just in this area and it's so close. It was very fun to discover that. Um, heading there at, hey, enough. At, at sunset, here are all these hands, sandhill cranes way out there. and In Wisconsin, you'll see a flock of maybe 20, or you hear them off in the distance or way up high, but this is an estimated 30,000 of these sandhill cranes. And off in the distance, somebody shot off a shotgun, and the cranes just lifted up in the air. And it was just beautiful. These, all of them swirling around like a tornado of sandhill cranes. It was just gorgeous. So some morning I want to <laughs> head out there and see it. But yeah, it was kind of fun too. At sunset, all these birds were watching the sunset over the mountain. Thousands of birds all facing the same direction. I'm jealous. I can't wait to uh, go check it out myself. Um, about permaculture, have you had any previous knowledge of permaculture? No. The first I heard myself. of it was when you and JJ mentioned that I'm going to what? Whoops. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. I guess he doesn't think so. <laughs> So, um, so I had to look it up and find out what it was all about. And um, because I like learning, I thought this will be really fun and it will be a whole lot of learning. But it will be very interesting. So you've been doing your own uh, kind of research? Yes. Um, where I'm staying right now, it's 13 minutes outside of Bisbee. And wandering around Bisbee has been a lot of fun. It's uh, definitely an artist community. Um, <laughs> This week, a coati walked down the sidewalk. And I, I thought, what is that? Because you don't see those in Wisconsin. But it was beautiful and just very set on heading down the sidewalk. And you don't expect to see something like that. Um, the big long tail and the, the long legs and that really long snout. I had never seen one before, but it was kind of thrilling to see this this kawadi walking down the street. So, just um, discovering things like that that you don't even expect to find. And and then the um, uh, Bisbee's a mining town and it was famous for the copper mines. So, they, they have a copper mine tour that was very interesting. Learning about how they used mules and uh, to bring ore out and the signaling that they used and how they blasted in the mountain. It was all very interesting. Cold, though. You take a jacket. All right. Now, um, when we're out there, uh, when we're finally actually building the homestead, 
it's going to require um, a lot of different various skills. Obviously, we're all going to have to learn quite a bit. Uh, what do you feel? What kind of skills do you feel like you already have? That I already have clay experience. Um, I'm a ceramic artist. Ceramic sculpture was my medium. So um, the soil itself is, it looks like it's just about perfect for this kind of building. Um, uh, I had Peter bring home a chunk of it because I wanted to see what is caliche. And that's the soil out there. And JJ tells me that two feet down from the, the soil is a three foot layer of caliche and then sand. Caliche is like natural concrete. So once it's been there and its water has soaked through it, it turns into concrete. So that'll be a challenge, but as a material, when you're using it, there's your natural concrete for your building. So, I mean, that's, and it's free because it's right there. All it's going to cost you is your, your time and some physical energy. So that will be fun, and then, then the chance to design something that I think will be what I really like to have. So I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait to start. I think we all feel that way. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. What do you um, What do you see for yourself in the future doing this project? Um, well, what would you like to get out of it? A place to live first, um, a, a relaxed environment, and the chance to sit down and work on the novels. Um, I'm about 8,000 words into the fourth novel, so I'm anxious to get that going and finished. And um, I think that being a being able to educate people about the things that we've learned would be very interesting. Um, if what, Whenever you move into an environment, you should know something about the environment. Mm -hmm. It's not like moving into a neighborhood and never knowing who your neighbors are. <laughs> because your neighbors, right out there, there aren't any neighbors around, really, unless you're counting the javelinas and the deer. and the insects, so the whole educational thing is one huge fascination. De definitely. Uh, I could say um, having you down here, you got here not too long after Peter, and uh, having you down here has already been a big help. Um, you know, you've helped us, you're helping us out here around our house, trying to get things ready to sell. Obviously, you're going to be helping us out there, trying to bring that land up, trying to develop that land. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been an honor already having you here. I'm so thankful that you invited me. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, like, exactly with uh, the Peter, you know, you know, we're hoping that we can help him out. And, uh, he, like, he's definitely been a big help with us. Same thing with you. Yeah, I feel, um, yeah, I'm hoping we can help you out in some ways because you've already been bringing so much, uh, to us and our project and everything like that. Well, I'm going to need your help for building because <laughs> I've got little girly muscles, so they're not much good for lifting, but, you know, I'm, I can throw ideas out and, I'll do what I can to help, which is what I've been trying to do. You know, uh, one thing I can say about about you is that, um, you know, obviously, your re retirement age, um, you've been a little bit weakened with the uh, with the cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you haven't been as strong as you have been when you were, you know, doing triathlons and everything like that. No, I, but, yeah, I probably lost... 20 pounds. So I've gone from a size 8 to a size 2. That's a lot of 
what they say five pounds per size <laughs> but um but I mean you're you're very smart you um <coughs> very creative um, <coughs> Ty, no. <laughs> Um, and um, been doing an awesome job keeping us on track uh, just in like a natural leader huh. and I mean your skills have already been uh, amazing I can't wait to see how well you flourish out there <laughs> <laughs> thank you but um, I mean these are just some of the things I've been seeing about you what to all the people that might be watching this what would you like them to know about you what would you like Mm, I think I pretty much covered it. I'm an outdoor person. I'm a writer. I'm an artist. Um, I I love learning. I love reading. Most anything. But if I can learn something from reading, even better. So, and the chance to, to work on um, something entirely new is like sugar <laughs> <laughs> a good cup of coffee <laughs> uh, one of the things I can't wait for is I can't wait to see like the influences you have out on the land and on this project and the influences these things are going to have on you I think that will be that'll be interesting yeah well maybe I'll have to grow up <laughs> I think we're all going to go through some changes. <laughs> well, Grace, uh, I mean, thank you for um, coming along on this on this project. Thanks for being a part of this interview. And, um, you know, we're going to be seeing a lot more uh, of Grace on, uh, on this channel as we do more work out there. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks for inviting me over. All right. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone.